Hi, I'm Judith Hill with Judith Hill Photography. I own a portrait studio in downtown Nashville. I always say I'm in the business of celebrating lives and building confidence through a photo shoot. So today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, which is self-love. I believe self-love comes down to your own well-being and happiness, which you can achieve through gratitude and acceptance. Trust me, that is the name of the game. I've been photographing women for 10 years. We have talked about careers, we have talked about love, the lack of love, we have talked about body image and everything in between. And I always wonder, where does this idea of not being good enough come from? Because I just hear a lot of stories and a lot of stories even as far back as from childhood, which are, and stories are really just habitual thoughts that we attach emotion to, which means we can change our lives when we change the story and the emotion that we tie to it. Your thoughts are so powerful. Everything that's happening in your life is a mirror of your thoughts and emotions. Recently, not too long ago, someone was really frustrated with me and maybe even holding a little resentment. And in that moment of when they were so frustrated with me, I just started thinking about all the things I loved about that person. Just a running list of all the different things I love about that individual, things that I love how they do in their life. And it was just this running list of love and it wasn't probably 10 minutes later that I got an apology from that person. That's how powerful our thoughts are. <clears throat> we have a tendency that we think, I'm gonna get happiness and I'll start loving myself when I lose weight, when I get that job, when I get a promotion, when I leave my job, when I accomplish any goal that's X, Y, Z, fill in the blank, that could be personal, spiritual, or professional. And that's just not true. That's not where your worth is. You're worthy because you're alive. So, you know, we have to, we have to stop that. It's, you know, in my studio, I've heard everything because I photograph women. So uh, we tend to look in the mirror and point out all the things that we don't like about ourselves. All the wrinkles, the weight, uh, my nose is big, my cheeks look fat when I smile, my eyes are small, this eye's bigger than this eye, uh, this side droops, this is my good side, whatever it is, I've heard it all. And I just don't buy into that. I mean, when I, when I went on the, my first date with Justin, who's my love, and I told him, I see people differently than they see themselves. And, and because I see them as they truly are. And what my job is, what I do, is I capture that and I show it back to them. And I know that's true because one of my favorite things is when a woman comes back after a shoot, first of all, she walks in the studio one way and leaves another way, which means she's almost floating out of here. She comes back to see her images and she's revealed back to herself through photographs on a wall. And she looks at that wall and she goes, is that me? And I'm like, yeah, look at how gorgeous you are. And she'll just take it in and she'll go, I love her. I love her. And I don't know who that is, but that is a badass woman. And I'm like, yes, girl, because that's the truth. And what I know is that that has a ripple effect in her life because she takes those images home. It's a photograph, something tangible that she can look at every day and see herself differently and strive to be that woman instead of comparing herself to someone else. We have to stop comparing ourselves to other people. It is robbing us of our joy. I used to work in corporate world and we'd have these receptions. So a lot of people, and every time a woman walked in the room, everyone would turn and look at the woman because the men would turn because a woman just walked in the room and the women turn because they're comparing themselves to the woman that just walked in the room, sizing them up. You know, for whatever, whatever dialogue's going on in your head, either, is she, you know, is, am I prettier, is she prettier, does she have a better outfit, whatever it is, we're just comparing ourselves. And we have to stop, we have to stop doing that because the most attractive thing is the energy that you bring into a room and you're responsible for the energy you bring into a room. And that's what's attractive, that the bubbly, the happy, the confidence, that's the energy that's attractive to other people. So we have to stop worrying about opinions and judgments because they're not ours to own. It's the other person. It's all about the other person. Unless it speaks true to you and you start telling all your friends about what this person said, then that judgment has some truth for you. And you've got to address it immediately so that you can then move past it. If it doesn't, let it go. We can't worry about that. It's all about what's going on with someone else. We all make mistakes. It's part of the human experience. One time when I, so I used to work in economic development and I recruit industries to the Nashville region and I was working on this project. It was probably my mid twenties. 
And I made some big mistake on a proposal and I was really beating myself up about it. And one of the women that I was working with that was the economic development person in that community said, she was wise and, and religious and she turned to me and said, there was only one perfect man and they crucified him. Like no one's perfect, <laughs> stop beating yourself up about it. And I was like, wow, well, that's kind of true. And then, you know, and then I'm running my studio and I remember I had this client that just degraded me and was totally disrespectful about some job. And, and I thought I did, I, I delivered on that job, but she was just very degraded. And she wasn't actually in a good place um, with, what, 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 with what we were shooting for. And that derailed me for like a month. It should never, nothing should ever derail you for a month. You know, as soon as you can get, what I learned is as soon as I can get to acceptance, then I can move through the pain faster and I can grow and move on from it. Fear is always gonna be there. It never goes away, it's just along for the ride. I was so afraid of leaving my corporate job. Um, and you know, everyone else knew that what I really should be doing, but I was just afraid and I stayed for a long time. And what I learned from that is like, once I went and did the thing I was afraid of, then on the other side of that, I survived, I thrived, and it built my confidence. So I always say, do the thing you're afraid of. You know, that fear is just a story. When I was so afraid, I was on a walk with Justin and uh, at that time before I left, and he said, you know, fear stands for false evidence appearing real. I was like, whoa, you're right. Like I'm not being chased, my life is not in danger. <laughs> like I'm not being chased by a tiger. It's just a story I'm telling, and I have an emotion tied to it. And so once I can move past that and understand I can change that story, then I can move through fear. We have to start trusting ourselves. We always know what to do. We know what's right. You gotta follow that nudge. Follow the thing that brings you the most joy and start trusting yourself. Stop waiting on someone else to save you. When I was 17, I was in a near fatal car accident. My colon was completely severed. I got out of the car I, then I got the driver out of the car and saved his life before the car completely blew up. And then we're walking down the side of the road and he leaves me, he runs, leaves me on the side of the road. My colon severed. I had to stop and wave down a car to save me. I had to save myself. Fast forward, in my adulthood, I was in a relationship, um, ended up being pretty toxic for me, but I kept thinking that whole time, like, if, this, if we would just get married, then I could leave my job and open my studio full time. And it wasn't even the right relationship. That was just some, I was looking for someone else to save me. What happened was I left that relationship. I got healthy physically, mentally, and emotionally, and I started my studio full time. I saved myself. So stop waiting on someone else to save you. Stop, stop with the excuses because those are just red flags for fear. And fear is just something we can move through. It's a story. You know, we always think that if I, if I lose weight, I can, stop, I can start loving myself. Your weight fluctuates. Relationships come and go. Job promotions come and go. You get a job and, then, and you love it until you're frustrated with it. Where are you putting your value and your worth? Hate breeds hate. Not accepting causes resentment, frustration, and anger. You have to change the story and work on these things. You cannot expect someone else to love you when you don't love yourself. Your whole being, your spirit, reeks of whatever your inner dialogue is. Let it be good, because people can smell it from a mile away. <laughs> you know, you have, to, you, have to, you have to start loving yourself, forgiving and accepting all parts of you. You know, there are parts of me I don't like, but I accept them and I try to love them and I try to give myself grace. Everything, every person, every situation is reflecting back to you, your own inner dialogue. So let it be good. Stop with the hate. You wouldn't talk to your child or best friend that way or even a stranger. The only thing you can change and the only way you can change is by accepting and loving all parts of yourself. And that is how you get to self-love, by choosing to love yourself anyway. That's what I've learned in my life and by talking to all kinds of women and showing them, showing back to them the best version of themselves because I see people differently than they see themselves. And I have the ability to capture it and reflect it back. I hope you got something out of this. I hope it was inspiring. I hope that, you know, maybe you can think about things a little bit differently and choose 
to at least give yourself some grace today.